now I've got a good idea, which old pilots, they're not bold, but they, they, they've got lots of interesting stories. Thank you, Brock. Uh, just to touch back a little moment, we were landing uh, in the Barrens uh, because the weather had gone out in Baker Lake. Um, we overnighted there. The following morning, Baker Lake said the we're, the, the low had arrived. It was clear above, but the uh, weather was good. So we, uh, the warm front had such that we could start up without any warm up and, and uh, moved into uh, Baker Lake. But what brings that story to my mind and typically of that day, uh, close to 50 years ago, was that the whiteout was effective in the high frequency band and Baker Lake could not close our flight plan with air traffic control. And the Edmonton Journal for three or four days had the uh, Northwest Territories uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, party missing on the barrens of, of Canada. And we just happened to have had a, a young cub reporter from the Edmonton Journal, who is now the publisher of the Vancouver Sun, uh, uh, wrote up the whole story. And uh, uh, if you look on your map about 100 miles this way, uh, you'll find Sissons Lake, which was formally recognized in honoring the circuit court, which uh, was so dependent upon uh, aviation. Uh, I see Bernie Brown sitting over here. Uh, could you come forward? Bernie and I uh, uh, first met each other in about 1962 when I was flying along the Mackenzie River and Bernie was building the church at Cova Lake. So between the two of us, we, uh, we managed to get, uh, get the loads in and the bell in and, and uh, uh, began a long-standing respect for each other uh, uh, as bush pilots. Bernie flew his own De Havilland Beaver for a number of years. Was that right, Bernie? Yeah, almost. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the time you came into Fort Good Hope and you said you weren't sure whether you were burning auto gas or aviation gas, but the uh, cylinder heads were in the red. Is that okay? Here you go, Bernie. 